So now let's jump into the different looping controls inside of the software and the different key commands that correspond to those controls. So looping different sections is something that you'll do quite often. And there's a few keyboard shortcuts that you'll want to be aware of whenever you're working on loops. So you could always go and manually set these loop indicators however you wanted and then turn everything on up here in the transport window. So it's definitely not the most efficient way to work. So there's some key commands that are quite helpful that'll make this process a lot easier. So the first one is going to be turning off and on the loop indicator. This is done by pressing the command key on a Mac and the L key on the keyboard. On PC, that's gonna be the control key. This will turn off and on the loop indicators. And I like to do this with my right hand because those two keys are rather close to each other. So I'll just turn off and on the different loop indicators. So that way a section can loop. And this works for different selected clips. So let's say I wanted to loop this clip. I could click on it and then press command and L and it will move the loop indicators to just loop that section. And it will also turn them on as well. If you want to turn it off, just press command L again and it will turn it off. This also works for different selections. So let's say I just want to loop this whole section. So bar nine to bar 11, I could go ahead and press command L with that selected and it will set my loop indicators and turn on the loop. It is worth noting that this key command only works whenever the sequencer is selected. So if I'm working inside of a MIDI clip and I have my MIDI clip selected, basically I've clicked down in this window and then I hit command L, it's gonna turn on and off the loop indicators inside of that clip. So this is only affecting that MIDI clip. And then if I was to click back into my sequencer window and then hit command L, it can turn off and on the loop indicators inside of my sequencer. So it is worth noting that you have to click into your sequencer to use these loop controls. Now let's say that we have a loop selected and we messed up on how long it is. So let's say we selected this section, we have it looped, and then I actually just wanna increase this loop to get this whole segment here. What I can do is hold the shift key on my keyboard and then click. And then you can see now that these four sections are selected and then I could hit command L again once I release my shift key and it will change the length of that loop. This works for any length of a loop section. Let's say I wanted to loop up to here. I can hold my shift key, press and click, hit command L, and that's gonna loop that whole section. If I want to extend it out to maybe here. I can hold shift again, hit command L, and it will move the loop indicator to the start. And again, that's gonna be control on a PC. There are some additional keyboard commands that can be helpful depending on your workflow. For example, whenever this loop is selected, I can use the left and right arrows to move everything around. So let's say I want to go over here, get hit command L again, and then with this selected, I could also just move that with the arrow keys. There's also some additional keyboard commands that can double the length of a loop or half the length of a loop, but I find that I don't use these rather frequently inside of my workflow. So I didn't include them in this video because I find that I don't really use them very often. I tend to use the selection tools. So I just kind of select the section I want to work with, hit command L, then use the shift key to adjust the different loop positions depending on what I'm doing. So this is usually how I like to work, but if you do like to use the arrow keys to select things, you can just be aware that that is an option. So this takes a bit of practice, but it's well worth it because it's something that you'll do all the time. So I recommend opening up Ableton and just practicing looping different sections and adjusting those loops to different lengths and just focusing on getting those key commands committed to memory because you'll use them hundreds of times throughout a song project. So they're very helpful to know and you wanna make sure that they're in muscle memory.